You're not filming us, are you? No, no, you. Yeah, I guess. Continuing from the previous video where I flew into Fort Lauderdale, today in this video I take a flight up the east coast to New York City aboard JetBlue's new A321neo in core class here from Miami International Airport. Now why the jazz guy you might ask, didn't you just find a flight to New York from FLL, the airport you were at already? Great question and easy answer, E190 versus A321neo. After checking in, printing out my boarding pass, and chugging along through security, I followed the signs towards gate E31, which required me to take a short tram ride over to that neck of the woods. in Florida does it go from sunshine to rainstorm and back to sunshine so quickly and so often. Since I had a bit of time till my aircraft showed up, decided to check out the terminal a bit since I've never been in this part before and grab some food from Pizza Hut to take aboard the plane which came in not long after. The A321neo is one of JetBlue's newest and youngest planes aside from their smaller A220s. A lot of the time these A321s will be used on more premium routes such as Miami to JFK or transcontinental and international flights. My ride today, N2059J or Pretty Fly for a Blue Guy, however would not fly those top routes specifically to London as it's not equipped with Mint or Mint Studio. Not all their A321neos have these first class seats, rather only even more space and core class seats. But fear not, this aircraft is still gonna look awesome inside. So let's go, I am very excited to step aboard. Cool. 24F, you are all set, thank you. Thank you. Wow, just take that cabin ambience in. I really like what JetBlue did to their A321neos. There's no mint, but it still feels amazing in here. The mood lighting and larger overhead Airbus bins are the big highlights for me. The seats, which I'll take a look at in a second, aren't any different from their refurbished A320 and new A220 seats, but they still look pretty slick inside the A321neo. Now, before I go into the seat tour, Yes, unfortunately, there was another Karen, and a very rude one at that too. I usually just tend to ignore them, cause why fight with people who don't know what the heck they're talking about? But I kinda gave a smug remark and probably pissed her off even more, so don't lose your cool like me. Just a lesson. Today, due to my status with American and JetBlue now being their partner in the Northeast, I scored a free exit row seat on this flight. While they do have everything a normal core seat would have including adjustable headrests, comfortable padding, a recline feature, overhead controls, and universal power outlets below, these quite unfortunately have tray tables in the armrests, which does make the seat more narrow. On the flip side, the legroom obviously is amazing, and in 24F, there is no flight attendant across from me. However, there is also no window except for this peephole, which I will say, I tried my best throughout the flight to grab some footage from here. So, let's see how this goes. Around the airport here, it should smooth out. We just came down from that direction, and it was a great flight. So, we'll be, as I said, just a few months to get out of Miami, and then we'll be on our way.
can't lie when a flight attendant flips you off for filming and gives you the stink eye throughout the rest of the flight, whether you like it or not, that automatically sets the tone for the rest of the in-flight experience. But this is JetBlue, so let's see if they can make up for it. Due to this being an exit row and there being a bulkhead in front of me, the tray tables are in the armrests and can either be folded halfway or the full way, and they are extendable. You may also be wondering about JetBlue's famous IFE screens. Instead of them being on the bulkhead like some airlines do, here, if you press a button on the side, the PTV attached to an arm will release where you can then adjust it to your specifications, and there's even a credit card tap feature on the side, like on every seat back. In my opinion, JetBlue has the most personalized in-flight entertainment system I've experienced yet. You can actually pair it to your phone and use it as a sort of controller. Just connect to FlyFi in settings, follow the prompts, and once on the home screen, click Entertainment Remote, follow some more steps, and voila, you have your very own personal remote and a screen that knows your name. JetBlue has quite an extensive collection of content on here, which I'll take a look at a little later on in the flight. For now, just gonna pull up the flight map, finish my pizza, and wait for the flight attendants to start the service for today. About an hour after takeoff today, FAs finally got to my row with the complimentary snack and drink service. I have to say, if you guys remember the other flight attendant standing next to Mrs. Karen, she was the total opposite on this flight. Extremely professional, friendly, didn't even say a word to me when hearing the whole thing, and she just served our row right now. I got my typical black tea with cream and sugar. Unfortunately, no snacks were handed out, most likely due to COVID, but usually JetBlue hands out unlimited snacks, and just from my previous flight on them in 2022, a video which I uploaded from JFK to Vancouver a few months ago, everything is in fact back to normal, thankfully. Something JetBlue always has though is free Wi-Fi on board. When connecting to FlyFi like I did earlier, that'll automatically connect you to the WWW where you can watch YouTube or anything you please. As we approach the Chesapeake, probably a good time to look at some of the entertainment now. First off, with the flight map, there are several different viewing options as you can see here, currently showing us passing over extreme Eastern Virginia. Clicking Showtime, we get to the TV shows offered on board, an abundance of movies can also be found by tapping the next tab up top, and finally are several games, with a flight remaining reminder always in the corner. One of JetBlue's trademarks when it comes to their personal TVs are all these direct TV channels. They've long had this be a part of the JetBlue experience, going back to the E190s and old A320 interiors. Tapping FX, I realized they were playing one of my favorite movies in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, so in the little remaining time we had, I kept it on my monitor. With JetBlue being New York City's hometown airline, they really tried to put some hints of the Big Apple on board here. None more convincing than the subway tile inside the lavatories. I also really have to commend them for putting a decent sized sink in here as well. It's not terribly different from most other A321 bathrooms, but it's the details I think that sets JetBlue apart here. As I walk back to my seat for the final time before landing, passing all these passengers using their PTVs, I do have to show one last important thing JetBlue includes inside this A321neo cabin, and that is this pantry area located across from the mid-cabin lav. Usually, and I'm pretty sure nowadays, 
flight attendants will have a snack basket here for anyone who wants more chips, cookies, and such. Everything's still showing good, probably five minutes early now. Nice day, hazy skies, 85 degrees. Those set of announcements means we've begun our final approach into the five boroughs and the end of the flying for this particular trip of mine. So, without further ado, let's glide into John F. Kennedy International Airport. To be completely honest, I had extremely high hopes and expectations for this flight, and I did leave it not the most satisfied. Obviously, Karen was a big part of that, but I think combined with that was the sort of cramped nature of the exit row seat width, the lack of a proper window, two people next to me taking up all the outlets, and a lot of space, the flight not really receiving the full JetBlue experience, and me being tired from pretty much non-stop travel since the evening before. I really just wanted off. Those were my immediate thoughts. Now, what I'd say here in the editing process is that JetBlue is still by far one of the best US airlines. My personal favorite would still be Alaska, but JetBlue ain't far behind. And I'm gonna guess a lot of you watching this video probably have JetBlue at the top and I would not blame you at all. The legroom and economy is tremendous. There's free Wi-Fi, tons of free content to watch, comfortable seats, power outlets, unlimited free snacks and drinks, and a fantastic new and improved fresh modern A321neo cabin. While I didn't have the best experience on this flight, I would a thousand percent fly this plane again, maybe hopefully next time on a mint equipped jet. is no place like NYC. As I was meeting up with a bunch of family in Manhattan, my dad being one of them, also being the person to pick me up from JFK just a while ago, we are now making our long trek into Midtown. For dinner, we ate at this really delicious Ukrainian restaurant called Veselka in the East Village. Believe me, I'm extremely picky with my European food, me being Polish, and I would highly recommend this place. Afterwards, we walked north to the Hudson, where a brand new man-made park just opened up called Little Island, which had live music playing and fantastic views of downtown, Jersey City, and of course, the Statue of Liberty. I really hope you guys enjoyed the flight with me today up to the Big Apple aboard JetBlue's A321neo. Thank you very much for watching and catch you on the next one.